Today at Free Field Training, we're taking a look at a SWAT plate carrier setup. This is my buddy's carrier that he uses on our local SWAT team. We're going to be talking about not just the carrier and the armor in it, but all of the gear that he has attached to it, what he uses it for, and you're going to get some insights that you're not going to get other places, so stick around. Where are you going? Get out of the way! Now the carrier itself is from Agilite. It is their K5 plate carrier. This was the carrier itself was actually sent to me by Agilite for review a couple months ago. And when I got done with the review, I said, we're going to put it into long-term testing. And this is it. I gave it to a buddy of mine, let him set it up, use it on the team for a while, see how it fared and how he liked it. A carrier itself, if you want to see more about, there's a video up there and down below there's going to be links and coupon codes and stuff like that for it. But in a nutshell, it's designed to be light and comfortable. So it integrates some things that you don't get with a bunch of other carriers. It takes 10 by 12 plates front and back. The side is heavily ventilated, but still allows you to put side plates on if you want as an additional option. And up front, integrated into the carrier is an admin pouch. Now, inside of this, he's put level three polyethylene plates front and back. Again, the idea is light and fast. So get adequate protect protection and be as light as humanly possible. Each of these plates is about three pounds or actually positively buoyant. His side plates here that are an additional attachment out of the Molly, you can see these are level 3A side plates and he's talking about actually going to longer but the same height side plates in soft armor that you can get separate attachments for in order to mount it in there. On the side, he's got flex cuffs on SWAT. They don't carry metal cups as a general rule in the United States. We carry flex cuffs because they're a lot lighter. You can carry more of them and flex cuffs meet the requirements of SWAT a lot better. SWAT teams, lots of time they're going to hand people off to somebody else after they've been arrested. There's no reason to have to deal with taking cuffs on and off. You put flex cuffs on them. These Millspec Plastics Cobra cuffs that they use have double locks on them, and that allows you to put them on somebody, double lock them, know they're secure, and then just hand them off to patrol or hand them off to whoever's driving the paddy wagon or hand them off to whoever's going to hand off to the local agency or to detectives and not have to worry about ever getting the cuffs back. These come in a bunch of different colors. They're using green, obviously, to match the green color of their carriers and their uniforms. Links and all of that are down below for that as well. Up front, we've got two mags. These are just black P mags loaded with our duty ammo at work. In a couple of open top mag pouches, again, the idea is light and fast. He's got one flashlight on here. This looks like a Surefire G2 Pro, maybe G2X Pro. Let's see. Yeah, it's got two modes. I think that's the G2X Pro. Very light, very small, 2CR123 flashlight from Surefire. These are very, very reliable lights. They don't weigh a lot. He's got that in what looks to me to be a high-speed gear single mag pouch. One problem with putting a 18650 battery or CR123 flashlight in these when it doesn't have protective wings on the end is if you push down on this, you get the light coming on. Just a big deal with this because he's got his rifle mags next to it. He was telling me so you don't end up with getting this bumped and having the light accidentally turn on. But something to think about if you're putting just this on a uniform. He's got what looks like a blue force gear attachment for his cat tourniquet and the tourniquet properly staged. You can see this is one of the later generation ones. We've got our identification up front. This isn't actually the ID that he uses at work. He's got a green one with white letters on it that says police and then the agency name underneath. We took that off for the video. And then his one morale patch on here is something that couldn't get anybody in trouble. It's just a slice of pizza. Instead of chemical glow sticks nowadays, we are using little twist on, twist off electric glow sticks. These are from 90s. You lose these, they don't cost a whole lot more than a chemical glow stick and they're reusable. You could use them for training, get in the habit of using them. You throw them on the ground, if you forget one, you're not gonna cry about it. If they go dead, you're not gonna cry about it. But they get the job done a lot easier. You can turn them on and off. They're just a lot more convenient than chemical glow sticks that get all over the place. So he's got two of those out here. These are for marking rooms and entryways and uh, directions for other people that you're trying to communicate with in a physical way instead of having to use the radio and talk with them. We'll talk more about comms in a second, but most of this is clear rooms, hostile areas, routes you want people to go, things like that. Up here is admin pouch. 
He's got a right in the rain pad, and he's got a couple different colors of these 90s glow sticks and a Sharpie marker and a pile of G2 pen to be able to take notes or be able to permanently mark something on a scene. Be surprised how often that comes in handy. Enough that with his light and fast vest carrier, he's still carrying a pen and marker. For comms on here, this is your push to talk and the volume control that he can have up front. So he sets the channel in the back, we'll show you that in a second. And then this is push to talk down here and it's well protected so you don't accidentally key up. I wish my comms for the street were this well protected so I didn't accidentally key up. And then up here you've got a really heavy duty volume knob and that just attaches to any loop on the front of the carrier. He's got a look down here. You can see the, the quality of this clip is like well above what you'd get with most shoulder mics as well. But you can see there's no microphone or anything on this. This is just the module that controls it. And then this attaches to a bone conduction headset up underneath his helmet. I think they're trying to go to something like a, a Peltor headset that's your hearing protection and your comms all in one. Those are pretty cool, but I know they're expensive. So those comms run through the little curly Q to the backpack. This isn't the backpack that Agilite sells with their carrier. He said he took that backpack and actually set it up as a go bag for a separate system for SWAT. We might get into that later if I can convince him to pry himself away for that for more than 10 minutes like I did with this one. This one I think is from, this backpack I think is from Haley Strategic and he normally has a big police patch back here again with the agency name underneath. So comms run back around to this little squiggly coup cord and in the backpack, we have his radio, and this is it. It's an APX 7000 radio. The problem with these, they get really good life. They get pretty good range. I've been happy with this one when I was on SWAT and on patrol. These are really good radios. The problem is that when you turn them on, these light up. When you transmit, they light up. So you don't really want to have them in a normal radio pouch. Also, another radio pouch is just more weight. You don't need, and then you got the antenna sticking you in the side and stuff. So he keeps this in his backpack. My solution for this used to be put a black sock over it and cut a hole in the top to run the cord and the antenna through. Just throw it in a backpack. Seems like a really reasonable solution to me as well. And that's what he's doing. I've got a gas mask in here with cartridge already fitted. So this thing is ready to go. Now some people might wonder about putting a gas mask in a backpack that you're not gonna be able to get to yourself. Remember we're talking about a SWAT team he should never theoretically be alone, especially if he's gonna need the gas mask. That means somebody's deploying gas. There's gonna be at least one other person with him and they're gonna be able to pull this out and help him get it on and it gets it up and out of the way, it keeps that mobility higher, which is more important for the situations that he's gonna be donning this instead of soft armor with plates in it. The whole big turtle suit deal. Now on the outside bob of the backpack down here, he normally carries his radio battery, but his is on charge at work, and so I took that out to put on here. So you can just kind of imagine there's a spare radio battery in there. SWAT callouts can be very long. You never know how long they're gonna be, and especially in the winter time, batteries don't last if you put them in the trunk of your car. So he carries a spare battery on top of the one that he keeps loaded in the radio. On the other side of the carrier, we've got another plate holder with another level 3A hard armor plate in it. And then we're back around to the front. His pistol, uh, pistol mags, dump pouch, and med kit, minus the TQ that he keeps up front. All of that is on his belt, along with some other small miscellaneous items. He's gonna have his helmet on his head, and ear pro on of some kind of another, and eye pro, because that's always important anytime you're going into a dynamic environment, especially if you're gonna be tossing flashbangs around and such. You can have little pieces flying off of things, pieces flying off of doors just from forcing entry. Somebody breaches the door, you have little pieces flying off, so high pro is very important. And that is it. Now as far as the Agilite K5 plate carrier, he said he's very happy with it, especially with the mesh that's all around this thing. Even the underside of the arm straps, he says it's very comfortable to carry around with all the weight that he's got on it. This whole thing weighs about 25 pounds, which isn't bad at all for a plate carrier with all your armor and everything and full up all loaded. So the only issue that he's had with it is that somebody on the team thought this was a drag handle. With expectable results, uh, ripped part of this off. Uh, for those who are uninitiated, 
This is just to like hold down stuff that you don't want flopping around. So somebody picked it up by that drag handle that's not a drag handle and ended up ripping this off. But uh, otherwise, he's really happy with it. It does actually have not a drag handle. These are supposed to be carry handles in the back of it. My suggestion with these, of course, is always to just pick it up by the arm straps where it's meant to be suspended from. Uh, if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, stuff like that, throw them down in the description below. I'm not going to tell you that I'm necessarily going to have great answers for it, but maybe he'll chime in in the comments section and give you guys a heads up on any of your questions. So throw them on down there. Uh, until next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, check out one of our other videos or head on over to the Patreon and see how you can get your name put on your videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are in the description, of course. We'll see you guys next time.